Uh, my name is Gerald and I'm working with knowledge. So, uh, what does it mean working with knowledge? Yes, <laughs> that sometimes PowerPoint doesn't work or the clicker doesn't work. Yeah. So, just go to the next slide, please. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm trying to transfer knowledge. I'm trying, uh, usually, I'm trying to transfer knowledge into teenagers, which means I work as a teacher, yeah? which is kind of difficult. Uh, to transfer knowledge into, into students, into, especially into teenagers. Uh, I came from private business. Uh, my background is internet, network, technique, security, photography, all kind of different stuff. And since uh, 2003, I'm working as a teacher. Next one. So I'm teaching at the tourism school in Bad Hofgastein in Salzburg, which is uh, quite around the corner here, up the mountains. Yeah? And uh, my focus for the last years, please, next one, is uh, STEM education. So science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. My goal and my mission is to make this kind of education more interesting. Yeah? So usually when students go into math lessons, they oh, math again, or engineering, or technology, or natural science. In, 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 in German language, it's also called MINT education. No, still not. OK, so science, uh, technology, one more. This one doesn't work. Oh, I need to switch it on. <laughs> yeah. Science. Yes, technology. Did I tell I'm teaching IT? Okay. <laughs> Engineering and, and <laughs> mathematics, yeah. Um, students age of 14 are very difficult uh, to, to uh, be, get interested in, in this kind of stuff. So I'm trying different approaches. Yeah? So, for example, uh, STEM in classrooms. We are building 3D printers. So uh, students are building 3D printers. Uh, they're printing stuff out. They're designing it in, in, in math lessons. Because if you design something three-dimensional, you need uh, geometry. You need mathematics. Yeah? Suddenly, they're interested in mathematics and geometry. Uh, we are building quadrocopters, drones, in lessons. Yeah, a lot of IT, a lot of physics. How do, why does this stuff fly? A lot of IT, and so on. But one of my latest projects um, was this one here. So um, maybe you know this kind of stuff. Yeah, everyone knows Lego. This Lego Duplo, the Lego bricks. This is kind of a little advanced. Uh, it's the Mindstorm robot uh, of Lego, and a lot of schools are using. Whoops. Shut up. A lot of schools are using it to teach robotics, um, software engineering, coding, mechanics, and so on. So I was thinking, it's called Mindstorm. So why not add something uh, from bioengineering, so something like this, yeah, which looks like a big spider. And this is an EEG headset. Yeah? So you know EEG measuring your brain waves, and you just put this EEG on. Yeah? And um, why not trying to control this robot with this headset? I don't mean uh, turning left and it goes left. I mean thinking left and the robot goes left, or thinking forward and the robot goes forward. And this is what's, what my demo and my presentation is about. So I'm not going to make the presentation because I'm a tech guy. I don't know to switch on how the, the, <laughs> the clicker. So I need uh, two volunteers from the audience. I will go out now and we will do the training for the system. And after the next uh, presentation, I will come back and we will show what we achieved or ho hopefully achieved. I'm quite sure it will work. So who is going to join me? Yeah. There's, OK, yeah, one guy over there and here one, <laughs> let's, okay, let's, politically correct, one, one woman too, yes, come on please, yeah, okay, <laughs> so, okay, so I'll, I'll be back, yeah. Hi, I'm Nikki, <laughs> nice to meet you. Okay. Come in the sunshine, share your new, is that fancy? You pick one with... Hair, hairs like mine would go soon, right? Yes. The, the sure reason why, why I picked him is because of his haircut. Yeah. <laughs> so, usually, uh, it's, a, it's a medical, like he explained before, it's a medical EEG system, so it needs to make a connection to your, to your head, not to your brain. Yeah? So, uh, and it's going to be really difficult if someone has this Afro look or a lot of uh, jail or so in, in there. And 
Yes, we are online. Yeah. So please have a seat. Don't. Okay, go like this one. Careful of the cables. <laughs> okay. So what we uh, what we did outside, uh, we made some uh, training. So what you can see here is the good news in at first. Oh, we found rain. Yeah, everything is green. Uh, so you, you need to fit the headset according to reference points uh, on your head. So it's, a, it's 16 reference points. And after it's a fit, you have to, one have to do, um, you can switch on to the cognitive suite, and the training starts. So the, the system cannot read mind. Yeah? But uh, it can uh, measure average EEG waves when you are concentrated on some topic. So, for example, you see here the first one we do is the neutral state, uh, which means um, you have to look at this, this cube going up and down and be maybe relaxed, which is difficult up here. That's why we did it outside. So, that's the neutral state. Then the next state is uh, to pull something. So, you see this cube and you imagine the cube is coming out. It's getting bigger. Yeah? This is a visual aid. Yeah? Um, so, when the cube is coming out, uh, it's moving forward because, uh, like I showed this robot, you can also connect a smartphone in here and then you can uh, see the perspective of the robot. So if the robot sees something, you want this object or person to come here and therefore the robot moves. Yeah? And, oh, like here, he's doing it right now. So, but you can also think of, uh, I don't know, Wiener Schnitzel. Yeah? It doesn't matter. Yeah, so, if you're really hungry, you think of Wiener Schnitzel for 10 seconds during the training, I just program Wiener Schnitzel as moving forward. Yeah, so, that's why I told it cannot read mind. Yeah. The second training we did is left. Yeah, so, you just look at the cube and imagine the cube going to the left. Yeah, and then, the programming uh, to the robot is just again turned to the left and uh, we just stop the talking and as he's already moving around a lot, uh, we just activate it and let's see what's happening. So, uh, is it neutral? Yeah. yeah, it worked good for 10 minutes now. <laughs> so. Yeah, so the cube goes to the left and the robot turns to the left, yeah? <laughs> so, I will just keep it running around here and talk a little bit, because this is a part of a project I started, and it, I was thinking, okay, why uh, only make uh, the robot controlled in a room? Yeah? Let's do it over the internet, and there it was called for three, two, one mind crawler. So we, I gathered four schools in three countries, and at the end, there was one robot in Budapest, and it was controlled by students from Kloster Neuburg, uh, just by thought. And the, the second robot was in Italy, in Verona, and it was controlled by students in Bad Hofgastein, also just by concentration. So this was uh, some kind of some project. I always have to <laughs> look not to step on the little guy. Yeah. Uh, so this was a project which really raised interest in STEM education, as you can imagine. And if not, you can try it later outside. So I would be happy. I am here. Uh, I have one volunteer. I promised her to try it. And if some other people want, we can try it too. Yeah, so it's still running. Yeah. Uh, the interesting part in this, with this system is um, the younger uh, the candidates are, the easier it's going. So usually... Uh, children age of 10, they just need a training for 20 minutes and they go in all four directions. For me, it took one week to manage these four directions. So you see, our brain is getting more and more programmed the longer you are in school, I'm telling, or the more you grow up. And I'm quite sure if I can take this, if I can try this system on, on, on primary school kids, or maybe even kindergarten, they will just play like this. I have students, um, they're sitting in the classroom with a headset, a hoodie, laptop in front of them, and playing World of Warcraft. Yeah? So they're changing their, uh, their concentration very fast. So usually you play left, right, forward, back, duck. Yeah? And he's just looking at the screen, and the character is moving, and he can switch 
his concentration in this really, really fast way. So this kind of project, it, it covers, again, it covers IT, it covers natural science, it covers uh, robotic, it covers software engineering, and it's a perfect project for me just to, to raise interest in STEM education, which we really need all if you want uh, some, good some good scientists in about 15 to 20 years. I will show you. No? Okay. There's still... this. There's this saying when you've been somewhere and you go back home and the, the, that your guys at home ask you to tell what happened, and the saying goes, "Can you give me a download of last week?" It's kind of get a new dimension here. It's like, can you give me a download of the past ten minutes? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, Evan. You've been really a great candidate. Yeah. Okay. I need I need the headset to control some other people. Yeah. <laughs> so, thank you very much. Incredible. So, I'm kind of finished. <laughs> <laughs> I can I can show a lot of more pictures from this project. Yeah. Um, I switch it. I need to switch this guy off. Yeah. <laughs> He's just picking up Bluetooth noise. And so um, the computer thinks as well. Communicates with the bot. Yeah. So, are you going to share something with us? Yeah. Or? I, I okay, am. Okay. Good. Just a second. Good. <laughs> We're fine. So. Does it work? No, it's not good. Yeah. Again, I'm teaching IT. <laughs> yeah, we just removed the T from the TEDx, so it's yeah. okay. <laughs> so. Let's have a look. No. Yeah. Um, this was the. Yeah, this is the wrong one. Okay. It still tries to control the robot. Yeah. Here we go, finally. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. So, this is uh, the setup I already explained, uh, the training. And uh, those are students, um, they're just sitting in Bad Hofkastein, and there's the laptop, and uh, on the robot there's a camera fixed up. So uh, the robot was running in Italy, and it just transmitted the live picture from the robot. Yeah, so the student, uh, she's just, well, she was just controlling the robot, driving to, uh, through the school over there and having a look. Same happened, this, same here, this is during the training phase. And this is another guy, this, one, this guy is really good, and he was controlling the robot, I guess this was in Kloster Neuburg, and they have been driving around for almost half an hour. Yeah. So, uh, if you will tell, it's kind of difficult to, to focus and, and to stay concentrated, but, to stay concentrated, but uh, those guys, they just stay focused um, on this topic, they stay focused for half an hour, they don't stay focused in lessons, yeah, as much as they do here. So, he was driving around looking at the robot in, in floor perspective and he was looking at the school and um, one girl was uh, going with the robot and just carrying it over stairs because he cannot climb stairs. So STEM education doesn't need to be boring. Okay? Just uh, let students work with their imagination and give them interesting stuff to work on. So don't uh, send them into classes um, uh, trigonometry, mathematics, um, IT, software engineering, where they have to uh, learn coding for a month without an output. Just give them something to work and, they will, uh, and it will produce an output really quick and then they will really stick to it and come up with new ideas. Because this over the internet controlling, this was part idea of my students and I was thinking, okay, why not, let's try it. I have no idea if it's possible. And we figured out together how it will be done and it worked. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.